Hey guys, what's up? Brent Calmer from Blue Water VST. Thanks for joining me for this, which is our eighth in the series on Native Instruments Reactors Massive. Hard to believe we're already up to eight. Uh, today I'm going to show you three things. The first is looping, the second is uh, triplet modes, and the third is using your own samples in uh, massive sequencer tracks. Very cool feature. Let's get going with looping. Now you probably noticed that as you look at these sequencer tracks, there are two numbers that are uh, displayed in red. The first is here on the lower left, and the, third, and the second is all the way over here to the right. And these indicate the loop start and loop length modes, respectively. And the way you, the way you manipulate these is by right-clicking and dragging. I'm going to start this snapshot. So here's what we have now. Now if I right-click on the 0, 1, and I drag it, I'm moving through, and you can see the portion to the left is darkening, indicating it's no longer being played. Now, what's really cool about this is that you can have, say, an odd number uh, loop start point or a uh, loop length and, and really come up with some interesting patterns, patterns that are not the same with every musical phrase. I like that, for example. But notice that it's different. It kind of it cycles through and it sits in a different place with each musical phrase. And as I uh, mentioned earlier, right click and drag on this loop uh, endpoint. Now once you've done that, now you've kind of created this certain length. And you can move through this, uh, move the kind of loop brace, if you're familiar with live or familiar with loop braces. Grow, go back to the uh, start position and you can kind of sweep through this spectrum and find a pattern that you like. But that is a, uh, that's looping for you. Very versatile because of course you can loop differently, loop each sequencer track in uh, with a different start point, with a different loop length, however you prefer it. And of course if you wanted to get advanced you could use Snapper to say, uh, put together a series of snapshots that have different loop lengths for each of the sequencer tracks through time. A very cool feature. So that's looping. Now let's move on to triplet modes because triplet modes are easily accessible right uh, underneath the sequencer tracks. For this, I'm going to move down to this hats track that we have, and I'm going to solo this by using, uh, what was it, right click? This is a tip that was given to me in the last video, which I appreciate, thank you, uh, to wh whoever uh, wrote that tip on the last video. Now, we have this kind of offbeat pattern. I'm going to draw in a series of hats on every 16th note so that you get a real feel for this. Uh, with various velocities. I'm going to explain why this is gray later on, but but in the time being, for the time being, I'm going to drag this uh, loop endpoint back to 16. And so we have this very plain Jane kind of 16th note pattern. Now if I come down here underneath this, uh, each four, four steps has this yellow bar. If you click and drag left, that will activate the uh, kind of four step triplet mode. And now it's playing eighth note triplets in place of sixteenth notes. And you'll notice that there's a blank here. This red bar only covers three of the steps because this final step is not being played. But that's not all. Wait, there's more. There is a step triplet mode that is activated independently of the four step triplet mode. And the way you do that is by click, right clicking and dragging up or down on an individual step. Now I should warn you, this is a little tricky. What I frequently experience is that instead of changing the step triplet mode, it thinks I'm trying to change the loop length and you, you kind of are moving all around and doing everything but the thing you want to do. So make sure you're holding your mouse cursor right over the step and click, drag up, and it will turn white. All right now I'm gonna, I'm gonna revert this to basic 16th note so you have a, a sense for just the step triplet mode. See, kind of a, a roll there at the end. Now, see, I've done what I just told you, you know, you should not do, which is change the loop length instead of the triple mode. So if I do this again, click up, drag up, there's another triple mode. And there's yet another one, which is a dark gray. 
And these also work in conjunction with the four step triple mode. So if I click this, go back to this triplet mode, and then click on say this last step that's actually being played, you can see that the possibilities are really endless when you're using these two different things. Uh, in the manual, it just, there is a kind of table that will show you what uh, what modes activated based on the step triplet mode and the four sixteenth note triplet mode. But as always, great idea to get in there and experiment. Adds life to your patterns. Really interesting stuff, especially when you start adding in shuffle. It's a cool way to use it. Okay, so now uh, the, the final coup de grace, which I promised before, is using your own samples in Massive. Now, to do this, we have to activate uh, or access the uh, sample map editor. And the way to do this is, say for example, we want to we want to change this kick drum. We have this kick drum right now. Now, if we click on the waveform, right click on the waveform, it will bring up a dialog. We can open the map editor, or we can also do this: come down to this uh, waveform icon at lower left, click on that, and that will bring up this uh, sample map editor and piano roll. Now. It will probably bring it up in this with this kind of list. I like to use it in this piano roll because you have a sense of what keys are playing which sample. Uh, it's a little more intuitive. Now here's a tip for you. I, I used to go through here and click on these and say, hey, how come it's not auditioning it? I have this audition thing set up. You have to have uh, the snapshot actually in process, in progress, moving. And then when you click on them, it will scroll through the samples. Now, of course, being native instruments, these samples are of the highest quality. They're super high resolution, beautiful samples. But you might want to use your own samples in some of these. So say, for example, this kick drum, which is labeled QK3 wave, we see is here. right? And this is what we're hearing. Oops. That's QK3. Now, if we want to replace that, we can come up here to edit and replace and now it's going to go directly to a directory that I've pre-selected. You'll have to navigate uh, using your file browser to the samples that you want to use. But I think this is a Loop Masters pack called Funky House Producer from back in the day. Uh, I'm going to select this bass drum 4, open, and you'll see that now this label has changed to FHP bass, which is the Funky House Producer bass. And now if I come back here and solo this, the bass drum has changed, right? And it's now playing this other sample. So you can imagine what you can do with this. You can use your own samples, create your own sample maps, create your own snapshots, and access uh, Massive's mod modulation capabilities using your own samples. That's a very cool uh, feature. So this has been the eighth in our series on Massive. I hope you've enjoyed it. In the next series, I'll show you some final tips and tricks, and uh, we'll finish this off strong. And in the meantime, if you want to join me on Twitter, it's uh, Brent Calmer. Twitter, I'm now on Twitter. I like it. I've been too lazy to use it before, but now I'm actually uh, sending out tweets on a daily basis. So if you're on Twitter, join me, please. And I'll see you again real soon. Take care.